Do you know how to make the perfect badass monster killer? Give the girl red hair and a sword. Seriously, Shauna definitely has a higher kill count when it comes to the Denzins. Shakugan no Shauna is one of those shows that combine the supernatural and romance genres really, really well. And it also has a badass female lead who definitely falls to the overpowered category. The characters of the show also get their own moments to shine because of the pacing, and each character's backstories are revealed through time. Which makes it Yes, yes, I know what you're going to say. How can Revy, a woman who carries the entire Urban Dictionary on her shoulders and has a human kill count that matches Levi Ackerman's Titan kill count, ever develop a romance towards an average office worker? But what you need to know is that Revy loves rock in her own sadistic, nihilistic way. Come on, the girl grew up in the worst place in the world, so don't expect her to turn into a high school girl who suddenly wants to flirt with rock. The Roberta's blood trail arc is what specifically shows how much of an influence Rock has over Re At this point, you should know Japan is going to milk samurai girls faster than a dairy factory milks their cows. And just like they turned King Arthur into a waifu, what is the best way to get the attention of the audience? Meet the samurai waifus who can kick the ass of anyone that comes along the way. Yes, this goes along the harem route, but give this a chance, because since all the girls here are badass, the anime definitely does some justice to the badass girl innocent boy niche. Since this was based on a visual novel, the fans of the original visual novel received the anime with mixed reception, saying they converted one of the best slice of life visual novels of the medium to a generic harem show. Well, I liked it, but... <laughs> When I first saw the girl, I thought, huh, she definitely looks like a female version of Psycho Kanaki. And by the end of the episode, I was proven right when she tried to kill our main guy with a smile on her face. When young Ganata Igarashi and his classmates decided to go on a trip, all his classmates are killed. And Ganata is held responsible. Now, he is thrown into a prison where he needs to perform various death games to survive. Prisons are bad, but the prisons of Dead Man Wonderland are something even the worst prisoners wouldn't dream of. And combine those bad experiences with a psycho girl and her boy Ganata feels like he was thrown into a hell on earth. Overall, the show may feel like a gritty, gory adventure, but on the other hand, it feels like a mini version of Squid Game, since it knows how to keep you... Watching Ergo Proxy is like entering a maze and not knowing where to exit. This one starts with a lot of innovative concepts, which is why I feel like many fans abandoned it after the first episode. But the ones who stayed know how much of a complex story this anime brings to the table. Yes, it starts off as the regular human vs. evil robot story, but then along the way, it incorporates a lot of elements that make the story more engaging. Our main character is one hell of a badass, but the boy she meets is a guy who cannot shoot shoot a gun even if the enemy stood right in front of him without moving. <laughs> Do you love wolf girls? Do you love when urban legends fall in love with merchants? Okay, that was too much, then let me just go and say this is a story about a wolf girl falling in love with a merchant who pretty much has a voice similar to Leilauch. The wolf girl is voiced by the same voice actor who voiced Callan. Apart from that similarity, this couple definitely has good chemistry. Halo isn't that type of girl to wield two swords and cut and chop enemies like Raftalia, but she definitely knows how to turn into a big wolf who can scare anyone that comes close to a friendly merchant. This anime also explores a lot of fantasy themes, so if you need a good fantasy romance anime, this will definitely fit right into